Hello everyone in photography YouTube land. This is Carmine coming to you live from New York City. It's pouring out. And what do photographers do when it's raining out? They take macro photography photographs. How's everybody doing today? It's March 24th, 2022, and it's raining cats and dogs out there. So, this reminds me to take out my camera and some LED lights mounted on a mini tripod and gather some things around the house, like a dead wasp. Oh, we're going to have fun today. This is going to be pretty fast because I have realized that you guys want to get to the end of the video and see the photographs. We're going to do it fast today, fast and furious, but I have your homework, homework assignment first. Quickly, five things. Subscribe. I have a goal. I'm trying to get to a thousand. Help me. Thumbs up. You could do it. Comment below. Email me at blackandwhitephoto at AOL.com and go to my online gallery, carmitaverna.com. Let's go. When the weather sucks outside, you grab your camera and you grab either or both your macro lens. In this case, it's the Nikkor AF Micro Nikkor, again, 60 millimeter f 2.8D. This is an amazing macro lens. Now, you don't need a macro lens to take macro photographs. These are your new best friend. These are close-up filters made by Hoya or Vivitar. Folks, these are magnifying glasses made of photo optical glass for the front element of your regular lens. If you only have a 50 millimeter or a 135, just get these filters and they screw on the front of your lens and you instantly have a macro lens. And here's something nobody tells you. For example, this one is a plus, <sighs> come on, this is a 10X, right? You could take your 10X, they usually come in kits of four, you could take your 10X, that's very uh, magnified, right? And your plus four, and you can put them together. You can stack them, okay? Now look. Then you could take your next one. They come in a kit of four usually. This one is a plus one, and you stack that up on top of it. Okay? Now look. This magnification is incredible look absolutely incredible you take your camera you put it on a tripod you screw in some close-up filters made by vivitar or hoya you stack up one two three or all four of them look look at the magnification and you still have one more to go you don't need a macro lens macro lens is better but you don't need it okay Let's keep going quickly. You guys want so much so fast, and I'm up to the task. Next, your background. This is a photograph. It doesn't look very good on this webcam, but at the end of this video, I'm going to add all the photos, and you can see them in high definition. First, this is a bug. That's a tarantula wasp. Why? Because it's huge, and it lays its eggs inside of a living tarantula disgusting comes from arizona on etsy etsy there are many sellers of exotic dead preserved bugs and i bought this this wasp is about half the size of your hand and it comes in pristine condition the wings are intact it's beautiful okay so that's where the bug comes from where did the where do these little branches come from outside you take a scissor and you cut some branches off and you bring them in the house. You set them up. You put the branches in like a cup. You let them stick out. You take the bug. It's dead. It can't hurt you. You place it on top of the, the, the branches. Oh, and what about the background? 
That sounds so difficult. Look at the multicolored background. Guess what? Guess what we learned in photography school? You make your own background. This is construction paper. It's like $3 for a pack of 100 sheets. You take a nice back background color and you tear other pieces of the different colored construction paper. You put a tiny piece of tape or glue and you just build your own. Look at the background. This is what this is. You build your own background. You're going to be using a wide you're going to be using such a close-up magnification that your background, even if it's a few inches away, it's going to be blurred. Beautiful, colorful, blurred, gorgeous, bouquet in the background. If you didn't do this, right, on construction paper, what would you have? Black or just white? Come on, make your, make your macro photographs pop with construction paper. Let's keep going quickly, quickly. Let's go, go, go. Lighting. Do you need those $700 Nikon dual strobes that hook onto the front of your lens made just for macro photography? No, you don't need it. Grab a couple of these. These LED rechargeable lamps are just incredible. They come, this is the Lytra one. Okay, these are waterproof. You can take these outside in the rain if you want to do macro work outside. Okay, waterproof, rechargeable. This one is a high end one. Okay, it has the different colors, the different Kelvin. You can go from cool to to uh, to warm tones. Okay, oh, it's incredible. Now, how about one that's seventy percent less? These are called Flash shoot, F L A S H O O T. Also rechargeable, all metal construction. Look at this. Put it on a little mini tripod. You press it down, tons of light, and you can go brighter and brighter and brighter. These are incredible. These are a macro photographer's dream. And when you have steady light on your bug that you're going to photograph or watch or anything else you can control the lighting okay you're also going to see some of the photographs that i use flash too now let's talk about that okay uh, come on you gotta hold this one down okay now let's talk about using flash if you're going to use flash in macro photography make sure you use it on a DSLR, a digital camera, because when you have flash, you want to make sure that you're not blowing everything out. This way you can see it right away as opposed to using it on film. All right. Now, you don't need any kind of special macro flash unit. You just mount the flash on top of your lens and then you get a piece of white board I can make it for you right here. In this case, it's just a white, a piece of white board. Okay. You just take it, you would trim it. Okay. Say this is the flash on top of your camera. You just tape it on top. And at the end, you could just make it, give it a little bit of a bend. Okay. You could just give it a little bit of a bend. All right. To, to, to direct the light wherever you want it and you can bring it in you can bring it out you don't need a special macro flash come on guys this is all behind the scenes of professional macro photography next you're going to see a photo at the end of this episode that has a beautiful leaf and it has like it was taken early in the morning with the dew no it wasn't it was from a spray bottle whoop filled with tap water and before you take the picture a couple of sprays and now you have instant mist it looked like you waited hours for the mist and the dew to fall on your subject let's keep going next you're going to see in some in, in at least one of the photographs that you don't need a 
You don't need a Nikon D850. How about a $250 used mint condition Nikon D7000? Wait till you see the photographs that that produces. You don't need a $4,000 digital camera to take beautiful macro photographs. A D7000. Wait till you see the results. It's coming up in a few minutes. Um, okay, we went over the lens. We went over the lighting. We went over the the um, alternative to a macro lens, right? You have your filters, your close-up filters, very inexpensive. And you could buy them used on eBay for a song because people buy them, put them in their kit bag, and never use them. Okay, uh, remember, Hoya, first choice, Vivitar, second choice. Both are good. All right, I wanted to show you this for the background, okay? Guys, how simple is this? What beautiful bouquet, colorful bouquet, made with a dollar's worth of construction paper. That's how I did that, all right? Here we go. We're going right into the vote photographs. Come on, guys, subscribe. You can do it. Ready? Let's look at the photographs right now.